Good afternoon. Uh, I am uh, Amaya Gomez from the Acción Tecnological Vision Center. And my colleague is... Uh, my name is Javier Puentes. Uh, I work in the University of Alcalá. But uh, all this work is 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 the result of the uh, of a uh, uh, working group on Lorsenis. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, we want to thank to my PhD, Marie Cruz Alonso, for inviting us to participate in this training in school. The work presented today is a small uh, research uh, project under the acronym of Lorsenis. Long lasting reinforced concrete for energy infrastructure under several operation uh, condition. This has been developed by partner CSIC and ACCIONA as part of a specific task where the objective was the development of cement based material with cell sensing functionalities. Uh, but this work was not only limited to the material, uh, it also included the development uh, of the test that evaluate the property. Uh, this type of material completes the content of this training school in the line of durability and service life of concrete structure in aggressive uh, environments. At, it is related to the development of the material with new functionalities. The objective is provide the material with a self-sensing capacity, thus the corrective action that improve the durability and stem service life uh, defined by the material itself. Um, diagnostic and prediction maintenance system for concrete construction are system based on permanent monitoring of material. The objective they seek to base on the three basic aspects on the constructed infrastructure, safety of use, operational efficiency and maintenance and extension of useful life. The puntual and continuous monitoring through non detrustic technique allow through the data obtained to elaborate a response uh, of the state of the infrastructure and determine the action to follow. These are some examples of material monitoring uh, system. Commonly, these systems are always based uh, in embedded or surface attached sensors, except the last case uh, where the material itself is, is the sensor. Currently, uh, uh, automatic sensor using PSO resistive materials are used to achieve these objectives. This allows related the variation of the electrical resistance with the mechanical stress uh, to which the structure is subjected. This sensor can be embedded or superficial. They must have the data transmission system inside the concrete uh, with wires. Uh, limiting their use, they also affect with respect to the usual life of the of the sensor itself. Uh, it must be taken into account that it's implied to need for a maintenance program for the sensor system itself. Um, in the case of surface, use against aggressive environments too, and vandalism. But one of the technical uses that limited the use is the location of the sensor, limited exclusively. Uh, at the, the where the sensor is located in the in the structure and the area of the structure depending largely of the number of the sensor of achieve the most complete monitoring uh, as possible uh, the main objective of this project is implement the property of cell diagnosis of cell sensitive concrete through the incorporation of different types and size of carbon based addition that incorporate the piezo resistivity property, providing it with electrical properties independent of the humidity of the material. In this first step, the addition provides the material multi scale and multi phase level with the possibility of measuring a sensitive signal. This signal relates electrical and mechanical parameters through piezo resistivity due to the effect of carbon based additions. Mm, the incorporation of the, common, the components for cement matrix to provide a new property is very often uh, to a modification of their properties. Admit additive as CNT and CMF 
would preferably modify electrical resistance properties, but also microstructure and consequence mechanical properties can be affected. Uh, also in fresh state, a uh, hardened state. Um, if lack of dispersion or interfacial cement paste additive occurs. The effect can depend not only on the additive content, but also the characteristic of the matrix composite. Uh, the introduction of admixture with large radio form balls that reduce the mechanical properties of the matrix, especially if it's not proper dispersion it's carried out, like as we saw in the in the last presentation. Uh, if you can continue. We can see here. There was one of the problem with this material. You can see we have to de de develop a, a CC concrete. Uh, it was very difficult because we work with two kinds of um, carbon nanotube and carbon microfibers. That was the difficult. And we can see here the the bundles. Inside the pneumatic, we, we, we work with low uh, relationship between uh, uh, water and cement, and there was difficult for the dispersion. One of the, the, the big problems of these kind of materials. Well, for continuing with the presentation, I will talk about resistivity and piezoresistivity tests. The, um, parameters, sorry, that are uh, the most common use when talking about the electrical properties in concrete. The first one, the electrical resistivity, is, um, is uh, characterized by the raw Greek uh, letter and is defined as the material resistance to, um, to the flow, uh, the current flow uh, through it. The resistivity of the concrete can vary uh, from 1 million ohms per meter to uh, 10 ohms per meter, depending on the different factors that affect these, these parameters, such as water cement ratio, uh, curing aids, or also uh, moisture content. Higher the moisture content is, higher is the resistivity. Uh, and also, for example, if uh, supplementary cementitious material, so, sorry, supplementary cementitious material are used, also uh, permeability, permeability of the meter uh, change, uh, increasing the resistivity value of the um, of, of that mix. Uh, as, as other colleagues uh, present in the season, uh, morning season. Um, these parameters uh, gives an idea uh, about the conductivity material, but also they are used uh, on the assessment of durability of concrete. Here, in, in our study, we use the resistivity measure for um, the selection of the optimum uh, addition dosages. Uh, we use the percolation, percolation threshold um, for that purpose purpose. Uh, percolation threshold is the minimum particle content uh, which, uh, uh, which turns the material uh, conductive because of the pathway, conductive pathway formed. Uh, as I told you, um, thanks to the um, advantages that this parameter presents, uh, it's very used uh, in on-site um, works as a durability uh, for its durability assessment, like a, a quality control um, test. To determine this, um, for the measure of, of this material, of this parameter, two methods are used, uh, direct methods, uh, the methods and also the four-pole method. The first one consists uh, here in Spain, we use, uh, in now I think it's updated, but in, in that moment, in the, pro, in the Lorthenis project, we use the, this standard that is mentioned here. And it consists on the measurement of the electrical resistance, um, applying the uh, current in between the two surfaces of the concrete uh, sur uh, of the concrete sample, as you can see in the scheme that I I put here in the presentation. 
um, the electrical once the electrical resistance it measures we calculate the resistivity by means of this both uh, equation uh, okay this both uh, equations on the images, you can see uh, the direct method uh, performed here in the CSIC facilities by Javier and Marie Cruz in the uh, SCC concrete. And on the on the right, uh, you have uh, an example of the high performance mortar material uh, we we used in the um, in action facilities. The four pole method or, or winner method is slightly different. In this case, the um, resistance is measured by uh, for a device that has a four, four electrodes and uh, the current is, is applied between the, the two outer electrodes and the voltage is um, measured into uh, the two inner electrodes. Uh, once again, uh, one with the resistance value, we change, uh, we change it to resistivity. In the market, there are also portable resistivities that measure uh, directly the, this, this, this parameter, and they are used uh, mainly for quality control, um, for quality control tests. For the second parameter I want to, to talk about, um, the piezoresistivity is an electromagnetic effect that is characterized by a, resi a res reversible change in the electrical resistivity with strain. It enables uh, the sensing of stress strain uh, by electrical resistance measures as, as um, Jean-Marc told you before also. Uh, to, 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 to define a material as a piece of resistive material, it must be electric, uh, it must be electrically conductive. So um, we need to, 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 to make uh, concrete more uh, conductive by means of addition of metals and carbon materials that they are the, the most uh, common ones. The piezoresistivity test involves uh, a strain, so a mechanical um, testing system is required. Also, multimeter, uh, a multimeter is, is needed uh, for the resistant measures. And um, for the strain determination, also uh, extensometers or uh, gauges are, are needed. Okay, I'm going to show uh, the, the, this stage um, the, for the piezo resistivity test. We will show the parameters taken in account uh, in the development of the test protocol. The protocol has developed to evaluate the piezo resistivity and performance of functionalized materials in aggressive environments where maintenance and failure prediction is critical. This material has been specifically designed in response to a aggressive scenario in the Lorsenis scenario, and the requests include their cell-sensitive capability as a tool to improve their durability to extend their service life. Um, here is our, our, uh, an after of this. The uh, the, the, the research, uh, we adjust the variables of the test protocol and the basic factors in the development of the test were identified and studied. The process involved the development of material with the aim of determining the piezo resistivity property of the material at uh, different scale levels. Uh, we have in account the effect of the amount of the additive was considered, it's so important, the effect on the type of material and its microstructure. It was uh, the different of mortar or concrete, uh, the performance of, of, of the material. The effect of the test supply stress for piezo resistivity response. Uh, first, we work, uh, we were only incompressive, but uh, the material can uh, adjust to work in flexural. And in the prototype, we work with shear uh, stress. Uh, uh, and with different loading um, uh, magnitudes. 
we work with the uh, type geometry uh, and the location of the of the sensor or, or proof of the in the side on the material. He, we work with the effect of the Lua chain vari variation in the in the cycles uh, by type of load. If we, with the load was uh, the the process of load and unload, and uh, the other type of test was uh, continuous uh, until failure. Uh, two types of tests uh, uh, to establish the sensitivity of the monitoring system in the material. We sought to verify the initial hypothesis. We were could establish a response that relate the mechanical property with the electrical property of the material to both fatigue and failure of the material. Uh, a preliminary verification of the electrical properties of the functionalized material was carried out. The property varied in relation to the amount of functionalized addition with respect to the sample without carbon-based addition. It was observed that the resistance of the sample with the addition decreased by another by a, an order of magnitude. With these samples, we work with the variables that we saw previously to obtain the test protocol both to fatigue and to failure, the two kind of steps. Uh, their work. Uh, the, uh, the first piece of work is the activity laboratory test protocol was designed. The test compared the ability to transmit electrical current and the variation of this ability as function of the applied load uh, stress. When the shards applied to the matrix, in effect, to sustain the molecular level where the particles are aligned and rearranged, allowing an easy flow of electrons. As the sample is unloaded, the value also decays. As it is applied a constant current along the tension low at compression, it is possible to see the variation of resistivity during the test. To verify the hygrothermal condition that, uh, at the time of the test, because we, we see that this is important, the humidity of the sample, uh, 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 the, there was uh, very important to control the hygrothermal conditions. The sample was stored in a current chamber uh, before testing. Uh, it, uh, as it expected, when the test began, the, the potential and intensity was according to the applied load. The variation of the electrical property of each specimen were determined as function of various factors such as humidity, open porosity, and absorption coefficient. In this case, the fractional change resistivity was established as a factor for comparison and measurement of the piezo resistivity values of the different uh, kinds of mixes. In this way, a comparative value was established and obtained between different types of material, size, or even shape. A preliminary test were performed in elastic resistance zone of this material. This zone was considered with approximate value below 85% of the, the characteristic resistance of the material to be tested. And uh, that was our, our, our reference. Once, uh, once the basic better parameters and the type of result obtained were, identifi were identified, the objective of the test was focused on the fatigue of the material, was the next stage, comparing the values at the function of the value of the applied load. With the fatigue test, it was observed hysteresis phenomenon identified and in the literature as polarization, a constant, uh, a constant increase of the fractional chain resisted value along the test due to exposure to the electrical field depending on the microstructure of the material. This factor was neutralized by applying the current without change until the sample reached equilibrium. The resistance time was uh, like uh, 30 minutes. Uh, we can see here the polarization, the hysteresis uh, along the, the test. Uh, here we have the, the test uh, until 30 or one hour of, uh, we, we uh, put uh, the, the, we feed uh, the current and the stabilization inside the, the microstructure, but always was the, the this, this kind of of, uh, of the effect of polarization. That is, was very important. Uh, in the next, in this video, we can see here, uh, and we can see the, in the next Friday, the, uh, uh, a little presentation, but we can see here the, the procedure of the, of the, of the test.
This was the result. This is the low at, and this is the change of current inside the the, 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 the little specimen. And here is the connection. It's only for a, for for the test lab scale. That was the first the first uh, work uh, first. Uh, Okay, the, the following parameter have been taken into account was uh, to perform the failure test, uh, uh, piezo resistivity until failure. Uh, there was two methods, so we work with two methods. The first was a, a progressive increase of single kilonewton in compression applied to the end, initialing and unloading side to up to the failure. A progressive increase of uh, fractional chain resistivity is detected uh, with the increase of the load. That seems to be attenuated the last three cycles. If we can see here, with we we think is related to the 85% of the elastic Hello? region. We go uh, up of this region. We can see there are difference, but uh, we don't know exactly how. We have to 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 work more than in in this in this in this case. Uh, probably a consequence of some permanent deformation in the concrete. After loss of 38 mil megapascals, we have a, a, a permanent uh, def a deformation. No, a sample failed, and the fractional change resistivity caused the signal with the sharp drop of the of the fractional change. In the method two, here, uh, we, uh, the continuous increase in the step of 5 kilonewton in compression without, without the compression, with 20 second stay on each load increase, as is appreciated in figure two, no special condition was observed in, in, in this case. Uh, the video presents the graph of the result in the white box while the seem the recording of the moment of the failure of the final part. No sign related to the cell sensing properties that could anticipate that uh, the failure of the material is clearly observed during the failure. Uh, we can know the value of the characteristic strain of the material beforehand. We can observe some results related to the stress deformation when the load exceeds the elastic zone to the material, possibly to a consequence of deformance, a permanent deformation or a permanent damage. It is an interesting line of research to continue into the future. Okay. So yes, for finishing and starting uh, talking about the prototype scale um, test, uh, I want to introduce you just a brief, yeah, brief comments about the Lorthemis project, uh, where these self-sensing materials were developed. The project uh, started in 2016 and finishes in 2020, and during these four years, uh, the main goal of the project was uh, the development of innovative um, concrete for energy infrastructure. Uh, for this purpose, fun multifunctional concretes were developed. Uh, each one to, re to, to respond to the object of each scenario. There were uh, four scenarios. You can see here um, the uh, just a very summary. Uh, with dams or bridge piles or cooling towers. Our case is the S2, this one, the second scenario uh, named uh, concrete and mortar and the mechanical fatigue in offshore wind mile and sea structures. So uh, durability of the concrete solutions were proved and validated under several operating conditions. It's one for uh, in its scenario. Uh, starting uh, from a proof of, conf of concept of TRL3 to a technology validation of TRL5. The goal of uh, the, the studied scenario, uh, the one of um, the mechanical performance in offshore structures, uh, was 
the performance or the development of a self-sensing mortar in our case to withstand, uh, withstand sorry, uh, the mechanical and manufacturing challenges of this kind of structures. As you can see here, um, a concrete a concrete tower, a uh, windmill tower. It has several uh, different segments, concrete segments. All of them are uh, the mortar and the joints uh, are pumped from the top. Um, but the last, the last one, the, the, the one higher, it's um, manufactured is horizontally, and then when it's hardened, it is put it in the top of the tower. So uh, it's uh, the mechanical, the mechanical challenge there is, uh, and also manufacturing the pumpability is really important in this kind of of, of structures. In our case, we choose a commercial high-performance mortar, one for, for from Sika Sika uh, Trend brand, um, and uh, to make uh, to improve the electrical response, we use a combination of carbon nanotubes and carbon microfibers. The uh, properties are here: the carbon nanotubes were a multi multi volt ones. And for the characterization of those dosages, several uh, lab tests were carried out. Uh, the first one uh, to, for uh, dosage optimization, we performed um, resistivity measures to determine the percolation threshold, as, as we saw before. Um, we also uh, make workability tests because, as um, Javier has uh, told before, uh, it was very challenging, uh, mainly because of the formation of bundles uh, for carbon microfibers, uh, more than with carbon nanotubes and also compressive and flexural strengths. As you can see here in the graph, um, in our case, we didn't saw a very significant uh, effect in the, in the improvement of these uh, strengths when they use uh, carbon nanotubes and carbon, carbon microfibers. Uh, after la laboratory results, the main, the optimum dosages, the one selected for the prototype scaling was the, the dosage with uh, 0 0.2 carbon nanotubes carbon nine and 0 0.25% of carbon microfibers uh, in, by weight of cement. I didn't, I didn't reflect here, sorry. For when designing the, um, the prototype uh, geometry, uh, we try to, to be as real as possible or as close as possible to the real uh, joint in, in the windmill. So uh, we, we base the geometry in the FIA, FIAB, F, uh, sorry, FIB model code uh, to test the fatigue bone strength of interfaces. The, the prototype, as you can see here, is, uh, has an inner armor and also it has uh, connectors that are looped here in the joint. Uh, we also, uh, for the characterization, for the mechanical characterization of the piezo resistivity test, we use um, the, um, digital image correlation to measure displacement uh, strains and also to capture onset and development of cracks in the mortar during the test. As you can see here, is this one. Um, it, it consists, the technique uh, consists in making several pictures during the test and then in, with a software you treat uh, those images to see uh, those display, displacements and strains um, on, the, on the sample. You have to, to make it, you have to, to paint the desired, the, the desired section the, to a study uh, with, a, um, with a speckle pattern. Another, uh, another equipment used for the mechanical testing was the uh, displacement trans transductor, those here, and also uh, a strange, um, a strange uh, ros roset, ghost roset, sorry. <laughs> uh, those one for uh, the strain measure and the displacement connectors to, 
to, to, to measure the displacement and the slip between the mortar phases. Uh, here in the table, you have a summary of the test performed here in the CSIC facilities. I think you, on, on Friday you are going to see those labs. Uh, we make it at, uh, the first, a first push-out uh, test to, to check the, the sear bone strength. Uh, later on, we make a cycle test and also the for last one, we make a fatigue test. Here you can see a cycle test results. Uh, first, uh, we perform um, we perform several ranges of loading uh, with different percentages of failure um, of failure load, uh, taking into account the the strength uh, the strength get in the first uh, push out uh, test, and uh, different cycles were performed in, in those uh, loading ranges. Mm, as you can see here, a positive uh, fractional change resistivity was, was observed, um, depending on the loading and loading because of the, um, because of the additive conducted additive uh, gets closer. So the resist resistivity change, uh, sorry, the resistivity re response uh, decreases and, and with the unloading it increases again. As Javier told you, uh, this uh, as we as we use the direct current um, here in the test, you can see here the polarization of of the signal. But um, if you instead of using the uh, DC current, you use alternative current. This is uh, this could be um, uh, avoid. But we, we didn't have the the, the mechanical uh, test for that. Uh, here below you can see the maximum strain, um, um, maximum and minimum strains uh, get from the rosette goats, and this one is the loading. There is uh, inside its uh, loading range there is no sig uh, significant dif difference in in the um, in in the signals, so the bone uh, strength was okay, no, no failure was observed during uh, its loading case. Uh, from the digital image correlation also, uh, good performance of the mortal bones was observed and no displacement, no displacement, neither horizontally, never vertically was observed. So connectors, uh, the uh, connectors are not activated. I mean, the failure is it was not enough to 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 take place. Uh, this is the fatigue test. The when designing this kind of joints, uh, designers and engineers. Uh, take uh, into account more or less to have uh, 60 or 70 percent of the loading um, of the loading of, of failure so uh, first first test these two uh, 100 kilonewton and 130 kilonewtons take into account that 60 and 70 percent of the failure of loading uh, but uh, after uh, more than 60,000 cycle cycles, we didn't saw any change, uh, any failure in the bones. So we tried to perform once again, go a little bit further and, um, and go to a maximum strength of 85% of the loading rate um, to perform a, a very aggressive environment. So, um, uh, from the results here, the sample, again, uh, you can see here a tendency, increased tendency due to the polarization effect. Uh, it is noticed um, that for the um, aggressive environment uh, of uh, 140 kN, sorry, the loading, um, the loading sign becomes wider than in the other two, two testings. 
and this could be due to the um, it begins as it's a very more severe environment the joint integrity uh, it's becoming it's becoming altered no? uh, as uh, as it was expected and we saw in the cycling test uh, decreasing the FIFCR signal is observed because of the conductive addi additives get closer and uh, regarding the resistivity response um, a resistivity is increased increase is detected when when the um, end of the test is uh, approaches warning us that a possible damage could be could be get uh, soon this is a cycle this is uh, here is put fatigue but sorry it's a mistake this is a, the cycle test you can see here it's moving <laughs> Here the signal of the resistivity um, of resistivity, and, he, and here is the fatigue test. It's more um, the frequency. It's it's higher here. So, uh, sorry. Well, um, to see uh, how sensitive is the material, we use the GOAT factor. Uh, the GOAT factor is the ratio of fractional change in the in the resistor in the resistance, uh, de depending on the strain. So, as you can see here, these these are just uh, three cycles, uh, three no six cycles. Sorry. Uh, a linear correlation is observed here between both parameters, so a good accuracy and repeatability is observed. Uh, the, sensing, the sensitivity depends on the loading rate, so in this case the smallest, the smallest loading rate, the, the, the orange line, has the smallest uh, GOAT factor. And also it could be concluded that the material is sensitive, be, uh, to any electrical change when when it is subject to a fatigue test or stress. And for finishing, uh, this is a failure test um, uh, performance. Uh, here, as you can see, uh, fractional change resistivity um, signal decreases as the once again as the uh, conductive additives get closer until here that uh, become uh, increased uh, the tendency the, the, the lowering tendency stopped and increased a little bit warning us that something is going to be happened there in the uh, the, 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 the the pathway the conductive path pathways are, are are cracking and now the conductivity is um, is reducing and then you can see here the 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 crack the failure um, so uh, these these three images are corresponds to the three failure tests uh, performed the push out test all of them uh, failed in uh, shear shear mode um, but in some some of them the connectors uh, keep uh, keep 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 well uh, maintain the 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 bond but in others uh, as you can see here uh, they they don't um, they don't be able to understand the the failure so just yes, here the shear load is resisted mainly by the adhesive bonding and once the addition of the mortar is broken, uh, the full load is transferred to the connectors and it could or not fail. Ah, this is a failure test. Here you can see the the, um, the this is the fractional the, bueno, resistivity um signal and this one is the loading and just for finishing with the presentation 
A brief conclusions um, from the test performed here uh, for the Lorthenis project, uh, it could be noticed that the addition of conductive materials uh, has an electrical response. Uh, also from piezoresistivity property point of view, the different tests carried out on joint demonstrators of a positive results uh, on the variation of the electrical signal. And uh, the mortar developed uh, within the Lorthenis project presents so a self-sensing or self-diagnosis property that allows to its use as a sensor uh, to detect any defect in, in the structure. And thanks all for your time.